Hello, this is Brendan, and uh, today I'm going to play a little bit with uh, perspective, just the one-point perspective and uh, two-point perspective in the GIMP, or just GIMP, G-I-M-P, whatever you want to call it. At some point in time, people started calling it uh, the GIMP, or the GIMP, as if it were, you know, the actual type of animal, uh, or, you know, whatever a GIMP is. <laughs> you probably don't even want to look that up. But uh, yeah, no, it's GIMP. It stands for GNU Image Manipulation Program. Um, so uh, some features I'm playing with now is I try to make the mouse bigger, and I'm trying to uh, see if I can simultaneously get these things to work, which is me screencasting. Also have this uh, the zoom tool up so that you can see better. And uh, this is all in preparation for making some more uh, professional courses. Um, it's been a little buggy, but I'm working on it. So the next course we're going to do is uh, <clears throat> is going to be on the uh, uh, doing some some perspective, one point perspective. I'll start off with just one point perspective right now. Uh, not like I haven't done it before, but uh, maybe with these tools. So we're going to go up to the uh, the select menu and uh, bring that up. But this this thing's a little bit slow. If you go up here, you see you have file, edit, select. That's on the top left. And um, perhaps I can dock this over here and just leave it there. So uh, hopefully that's not too confusing. Um, well, it's a, this is all going to be an experiment. So um, actually, I'm, no, I'm not going to do select menu. I take that back. We're going to go to the. Uh, I think we're going to go the the view or the image menu. We'll we'll see in a minute. I'm going to go into uh, where is it? Create guide. It's actually an image. Yeah, see, some of the things I, I don't like about the GIMP are the way that they organize uh, some of these things. But if you go into Image and go to Guides, you can uh, create a new guide by percent. Sorry if I uh, confused you at all with that. <clears throat> and uh, because I'm in Windows, this is going to come up in a different window. So I can click on the uh, down here. Yeah, that's, that's actually a bug in Windows. I'm going to do a, a vertical at uh, 50 percent what that does is it's going to put a guide right there uh, dead center this 50 percent means you know half of the page so uh, hit the tap the uh, tab key again to get back into the regular view here um, it's actually good that I have some of these bugs in my uh, personal opinion because uh, that helps to uh, to show people how to deal with problems like that now I'm going to go over here to the um, view menu and make sure that I have snap to guide selected so that way when uh, no matter where I am when I uh, when I try to grab or start drawing in the general area of this guide it will definitely start right from it so let's say I try to start right here and I'll just uh, no matter what no matter what as long as I'm in that general area it'll start directly from that line and um, that's a good thing for perfection of course so all I wanted to do right now actually was to make a, a quick guideline with this. So I'm just going to draw a line uh, straight up and down there. You can also use shift and control key. I just want to make sure it was dead center. All right, I'm going to turn this thing off actually. It's kind of annoying. So I have that on a layer now and I don't want this guide anymore. So I'm going to go click the, uh, the move tool, hold down shift and then select that and just pull it off the page and now it's gone. So now I have my guidelines here so I can start uh, building something with one point perspective. Um, when I hit dead center and uh, oh, actually I actually have to make a new layer. So I lowered the opacity on that, uh, the guideline layer. So now I can draw over it and that'll just be, you know, it'll be a faint guideline. I might even lower it a little bit more. Just be a faint guideline in the background there. Um, oops, I undid that. Okay, yeah. <clears throat> So you can see it's faint, but when I go to draw now, or sketch as I will, it'll be a little bit more opaque. Um, so let's start off by just drawing something really simple like a box. So these are going to be guidelines. And uh, the important thing with GIMP, if you want to draw perfectly uh, straight lines, perfectly horizontal and uh, vertical lines, or at perfect angles, then you have to get comfortable with the shift key. So first what I do, and I'll try and zoom in here a bit, is I tap, I just tap the canvas anywhere, and now I'm ready to make my line. So now I hold down the shift key, 
and you can see it makes a line for me wherever I move the mouse and then if I just tap the canvas one more time there's my line now I can hold and this is a really great feature of GIMP which is uh, I, you know I believe is missing in Photoshop which I, I don't like I can start exactly where I left off and hold the shift key down again and do another line and then again another one and then another one so if you want to do something like draw a quick arrow as I just did there you go like this then you switch over to the uh, the, the paint bucket and put uh, change it to fill similar colors boom boom there you go well you might need to do a little extra work here but uh, you get the idea let's fill it in like that and there's a there's a quick arrow and you can do all kinds of stuff with that just by holding down the shift key I'm gonna undo all this so um, to practice with that again let's see we get the idea I'm gonna you know hold down first I just tap the canvas somewhere I'll zoom in a little I'll tap the canvas somewhere now I'm gonna hold down the shift key and just you know kind of sort of see if I can make a box like that and there you go I made a little you know it's not a not an even box but what if I wanted to make a perfect box with perfectly uh, vertical and horizontal lines now I'm going to do the same thing in order to do that but while I'm holding down the shift key also hold down the control key and this might sound like a lot of work at first but it's actually very easy because normally if you're drawing with a tablet or even with a mouse you're going to have one hand on the keyboard for your hot keys and you know, the other hand either on your mouse or with your drawing tablet on the you know holding the pen and so what happens let me be clear with this, so I'll undo these again. Here's my original dot I made. And when I hold down the shift key, first of all, you know, I can draw a line wherever I want, just like this or there. But if I hold down the control key, see how no matter where I seem to put my mouse, it, it puts it perfectly, in this case, uh, vertical. That would be perfectly vertical. If I want to go perfectly horizontal, then I just go over this way. And you can also get perfect angles. Look at how it just snaps from spot to spot right there. It just snaps, right? So this is a really useful tool to get perfect lines and uh, set up some guidelines for perspective. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now using uh, those, uh, you know, using these tools and, and tricks. And try and make a cube like a perfect box. This is something a lot of people do. Uh, well, for me, I, I can't can't speak for everyone, I guess, but for some reason. When I was in grade school, we used to uh, used to do this. So what you want to do is uh, starting from your horizon point, this the center point we have here, is to make kind of a triangle and a box, just like that. And then let's do that again. Well, let me to make it easier to understand. Let me just draw a box anywhere. Let's say I want to make a, you know there's going to be a house that I'm going to build over here. So I'm using holding down. Uh, shift and control and I'll just make a perfect box you gotta kind of eyeball it sometimes if you want you can use some guidelines and rulers to, to get that perfect spot you just eyeball it it's not too hard and now with this box here I'm gonna hold I'm gonna tap that corner there go to my horizon and then I'll tap this corner here go to the horizon I'll do the same thing for all four corners of that box and now what we're going to get is uh, a little bit of perspective. So you know how things get uh, further into the distance, right? We all, uh, well, I would hope that that might be a prerequisite to understanding perspective as things get further into distance. This is uh, just basically how to use GIMP to do that. And so uh, now that I've done that, let's draw another box, but starting a little further back. So I'm going to start right here. I can hold down my shift and control key, and I'm going to let it guide me and I'll just keep pulling it over until I hit the line and then hit it again. I'll keep going up until I hit the next perspective line, hit it again, and then come all the way back here. And lo and behold, I start right about where I finished off. But you can see it wasn't perfect. That means I didn't hit this line right where I should have. It should come back perfectly. And now you can see in this area, we have what should be like a cube, sort of a box, but it's not you know with all these extra lines here it's not really so easy to make out so let's lower the opacity on that and I will do this again and so now on a new layer I'm going to outline all of the outside of this box just like that 
And right there, even I could close these uh, these other lines, and you see I get what would be a box with perspective. But just to make sure that uh, you know we know what we're doing here, I'm going to lighten the color of this gray just a little bit. I'm going to continue to follow these other lines, hopefully making sure. Oh no, let me do this on a layer underneath that layer, actually. Yeah just to give you the idea I think I think you can figure it out I think uh, a lot of this is pretty easy to figure out after you watch it a couple times and there you see we have sort of a cube now I find that some people when they look at a very basic cube they have uh, difficulty understanding it because it can be confusing uh, to the eye even I get a little confused you might if you focus your eye on this spot here or on that spot there, then it can be uh, it, it can change shape because you're looking at a transparent cube. So I, I'm not quite sure what the best way to deal with that is, but let's say if this was a dice, a die, and I'll use uh, a red color as I believe they often use on die. And so this would be the front of the die, and you'd have one dot here, and maybe over here we'd have like two dots, right? And that would be the front and the side. And then back here on the more transparent side, maybe here there'd be one, two, three, four, six back there. And I don't remember exactly, you know, which side which is, but you can see it's sort of a transparent die like that. That can be, well, just equally as confusing, but it'll get easier with the next example here. So if you can understand the box, let's just make pretend that this box I'll get rid of this layer I'll keep this one yeah we're good I'll make a new layer and let's just try and turn this box into a house using those uh, those same rules it's gonna be perspective uh, what size brush do I have here a little bit smaller yeah so I'm gonna trace again the outside lines here this time I'm using a uh, a thick black line and so this will be our house. I'm going to go back to this perspective layer that we have here that was a little bit grayer. I'm going to draw a couple more perspective lines. I'll actually do it in a blue, bluish color so I know that they're different from the gray ones. Right there. And those are going to be for my windows. So imagine you have a window here window here and I just get slightly smaller I get them in the right spot we we'll have one more down here that also goes to that same spot and this will be for the door just like that and then we're going to need a roof so I want to get a, about the center here a roof is going to be like a triangle and again you can hold down the shift and control key and and just let it determine the angle for you I try and get the same type of angle there so there's that and from the tip of the roof let's also make a line all the way down there now you're gonna need one more line here and the best way to determine that what if I start from here and just make an angle that doesn't look right what if I start from here and make an angle that doesn't look right let's try starting from this part right on the corner of the roof here and from there, we'll try and make it at the same angle as that. So I'm going to hold down the shift key and the control key again. And you'll see that angle is just the same. And now to get some tiling on the roof, I'm going to click some random spots. Not too random, but one at a time. Just go like this. And that's enough for now. <clears throat> so those were all uh, only perspective layer uh, sketches. Now let me go into my drawing layer and I'm going to go back to the uh, the thick black pen. Now that I have these guidelines, I can quickly and easily go like this and this and I'm only going to draw in the parts I'm holding down the shift key again only draw in the parts that I want to draw such as the windows. And now you'll see the window that's closer to us is a little bigger than the other one, but that's good. That's normal because things get, uh, you know, they get smaller as they get further away. 
and then these little uh, roof tiles that we had which are very very basic but get the job done have those there now let's hide all of these other layers there you have a basic house and you can start to add things to it you, know, you have a little chimney up here but I want perspective on my chimney too so I can go back here to this layer and make sure that it goes all the way back down to that vanishing point same vanishing point back up here and there's a the chimney just like that okay I'm gonna leave this video here experimenting with uh, some new techniques and uh, yeah just using layers and this is called the vanishing point by the way it's actually the most important part of this lesson for me vocabulary isn't the most uh, it's not as important as understanding the fundamentals of what you're doing is so uh, yeah I'm sorry if I uh, skipped that uh, but if you're not planning to be a teacher yourself then what's the difference as long as you understand <laughs> the fundamentals but that is called the uh, the vanishing point and we'll learn more about that in uh, in the lessons as I teach them okay we'll see you next time thanks a lot and I uh, hope you learned something if you have any questions let me know thanks